with K Zoltec 269 yeah. into that next stage of the GPL. So into a champion so that we go KLH on the blue side, Zoltec 269 on the red side. Yeah, now very fast picks and bends come, or rather bends alone coming out here. Zareth so as well as Poppy immediately taking off for Zotac 269. Beyond had an amazing game on Zareth previously. And uh, Poppy just don't want Chrom to play that because you don't have to deal with that. Poppy just ban it out immediately. Don't want to deal with that. Morgana as well as Jarvan being taken out by uh, 269 here. Don't want Moon to get his comfort champion as well. And Caspi use Morgana. Not something he's played a lot, but you know, why not just take it out so you can play something that you enjoy more. Right, so hopefully we'll see some of KLH's battle champions left out and they get to first pick it. We won't see 13 goals on it Poppy, unfortunately, so... Yeah. No... Nope. No nope, counter nope. pick uh, in the favour of uh, KLH here. You don't get to style on your opponents with their favourite champ anymore. So KLH here, taking on Janna as well. So this, this is the thing about the Vietnamese teams. They always like to first pick Janna as well as the jungler if they're on purple side now. And... Taking that away forces them to pick something else. Sivir immediately picked up by KLH and responds Zotac 269. One that Rexa, they played previous game. What else are they gonna go with is the question. Interesting to see KLH pick that Sivir up first. Because I would assume that they would have gone with Nar instead. Because yeah. Nar really played a big factor in that previous game. If 269. Oh. oh speaking of styling on your opponents with their comfort champions here. Uh, Sir so really wants that Leoner. He's hovering it, telling Caspi, you know what, I'm going to take this away from you, buddy. You're not going to play it today, uh, or at least this game, so watch out, man. But this will leave the Nara for KLH, so... Yeah. Zotac 269, will you go for this Leona? Will you shut Caspi down? Yeah, and power picks now coming for uh, both teams here. Nara, Lissandra as well is open. Garen! Yeah, Garen, probably not, well, but then again, Krom they has played Poppy. Yeah, Krom has played a bunch of very... Unusual non-meta champion. If so Krom takes that Leona and goes to top lane, that'll yeah. be the best thing yeah, ever. Yeah, I'll just be mind blown just because, you know, they're comf comfortably in second place now, you know, locked in their spot. Might as well, Remit. I mean, Wow, KLH, new. they are really going hard. Yeah. <laughs> Alistair and Vi locked in, they want to lock down, so tag 269. If you take the Leona, we'll take the cow. Yeah, it, they're definitely going for the full dive composition here, the Colombo Hunters. With that on the hunt speed up, you get the Vi as well as Alistair into range even easier to propagate more knockups. You know, they could actually finish this off with a very nice Yasuo, something along this line. 269, I think the exact same thing. Yeah. But looks like Azir is a big of choice for the side of Zotac yeah, 269. Interestingly, Azir uh. was banned out the previous game, and now with this game, they banned out Zeref. So Beyond's Azir is open because they choose to take out the Zeref instead. Now, Beyond. He really wants this bird, man. Is he gonna lock it in now? Wow. <gasps> the Jinx here. Celebrity really wants to style on Jaehyun with his favorite champion as well. If you guys didn't catch the Legend Cyber Arena, the LCA, the previous weekend, Jaehyun played Jinx, uh, I believe, four games, and he won three of those, snowballing very handily. Now, Celebrity taking away <laughs> Jaehyun's favorite champion. Really, really want to make a statement here, this Vietnamese side. Well, this leaves KLH with the Yasuo pick. Let's see if... Or Zora Vecchi is gonna go on the Yasuo, or will he go on his 17 to LeBlanc and try and redeem himself from just, that? Just go for the Yasuo That's here, guys. That's a call oh, well, without the know. Yasuo. Oh, Zora Vecchi is very proficient on this set, so getting an Assassin in the similar vein as well, not too bad of an issue here for Kuala Lumpur Hunters. But, you know, they had all the makings of the knockup composition, just didn't decide to pull out the Yasuo. However, it is a very good... Which makes sense, because Yasuo against uh, Zil... Yeah. It's a horrible matchup. Yeah, it's probably going to get bullied out in lane. Now, something I want to talk about is this Sivir pick. Normally, teams, when they play Sivir, they have two styles of playing uh, the composition. One is that AoE heavy in wombo combo damage. You go with Nar, you go with Jarvan, you go with Lissandra. And then you propagate all those team fight damage uh, in a group. Whereas the other way you could go is the point man strategy, as I like to call it. You focus all the attention onto one member of your team. And give you buff him up so much and allow him to get deep in the back line, deal a lot of damage to the enemy team. Now, they've probably gone with the point man uh, in this case because you have that Lulu to buff Wild Growth, probably the Vi or even uh, the Z. Uh, yep. And you have the Alistair as well to provide a bit of zoning in the back line. So KLH here know the strategy that they want to go for. As for Zotac, you know, Freedom, take me through this composition. Well, it's pretty similar to the comp that they ran previous game. Interesting enough, Chrome's going to pick up the Irelia for himself instead. So he's yeah. going to start on 13 goals, and the bot lane's going to start on KLH bot lane. 
Dude, so this, yeah, this is a KOH bot lane, time and tested, tried and true. This is something they're very comfortable with and not going up against them. You have to think strategically is going to play a big part because this is something they always run. Right, right. So if, considering that KLH love these champions, they probably know how to play against them as well. Yeah. So 269 really have a lot to prove if they want to really style on KLH and win with the champions that they but, love. But if they do do it though, if they it'll do manage to win, cool. <laughs> yeah. if they manage to win KLH with this composition, it will be very impressive and very... Uh, Rewarding to watch, I, I think. Right, so back to 269's com, Irelia, Rek'Sai, Azir, Jinx, Leona. They have that lockdown. They have that solar flare. Irelia can just follow up. Rek'Sai with the follow up knockouts. Yeah. They have a pretty strong fighting com. If KLH goes in for the lockdown, they have the wall from Azir to push them yeah. back. They have using a solar flare once again. So 269 can play around the fact that KLH wants to go in. Or they can go in on their own, so... And not to mention, yeah. the Azir here works in a kind of offensive and defensive fashion. You're not going to have the Solar Flare, use that uh, Sand Soldier, just pierce straight in, deal a lot of damage over time. But if, you know, they decide to jump on, uh, if you get jumped on rather by uh, KLH here, use the Emperor's Divide, separate them, and just kite backwards with all those stuns that Leona will provide. And you know, I really just dive the back line, because why not? And not to mention, they have their Rek'Sai. Yeah. <laughs> Rek'Sai has that global presence, so... We won't be seeing Osora Becky split pushing as much as that because Rek'Sai is always there to deal with you. Yeah, we should talk about the global presence. More commonly, or more often than not rather, we see the Rek'Sai use the, the Void Rush presence. to farm the jungle instead of ganking lanes. Something that I think a lot of the people, uh, the pros are very vocal about. I'm pretty sure the previous game, Heaven didn't use that ultimate offensively at all. Yeah, <laughs> I was talking to Fish after the game and he said, you know, well, Rexa had not a lot of presence on the map as compared to in the jungle, so we have to see whether Heaven uh, makes better use of their Void Rush this time. Right, so we are on a 3 minute delay as we are playing on the live server, so do bear with us. We will be going to game shortly. It will be KLH going up against Zotac 269 for that honor match. Yeah, definitely the honor match, especially now that Zotac has picked up. You know, we mentioned this a couple of times, but I just want to say, if for those of you that are new, Zotac basically has three-fifths of what KLH normally plays uh, on an average day, so really for their honor now. Also, Raveki played Azir yesterday, Yeah. so <laughs> four-fifths. Well, yeah, four-fifths, you know. Moon, he, he doesn't really like the Rek'Sai. Rek'Sai. He likes those, yeah. uh, he's an indie kind of jungler, he likes those non-meta champions. He plays Sajwani that gets banned out every single game. Yeah, he has worked really well with Sajwani, yeah. so it's not really something uh, that is kind of weird to ban out against him, because you don't want to deal with that. Right, so... We'll be going to game shortly. No, Casey, once take again. me through both compositions. What they'll be looking to achieve in the early game. Would we see a lane swap considering, you know, with Zotac 269, they are very good strategically in the early game. So what are we looking for? Zotac, once again, this will come down to the level 2 engage at bot lane. Yeah. Previous game, we didn't really see that because Caspio and Jeyong just went on level yeah, 1. Right. So level 2 coming from Leona. Sir against the Alistair, who has that hit button to negate the Xenoblade coming in. Yeah. That's where the point of focus is coming in. Whoever pulls the skill first, whoever pulls their trigger first, will get countered by the other target. If yeah. Alistair goes in with a hit button, you get locked down by uh, uh, Leona. If yeah. Leona goes in Xenoblade, you get locked down by Alistair. And to add on to your point about level 2, is both these AD carries are very good at pushing up the lane early. You have the Ricochet coming in from Sivir, who's going to be clearing waves pretty handily. And then you have those rockets coming in from Jinx, who's also going to be clearing race pretty well. So both teams probably going to rush to level 2 as we do see a pause come in now, guys. For those of you that are unaware, GPL, Game 2 of 269 versus KLH. All for honor here on the spawning on the blue side. Well, not really spawning yet because we are in the pause. It's KLH, 13 goes in the top lane playing Lulu, Moon, Vi in the jungle, Ozarveki, his favorite Zed in the mid lane. Going to be looking for some great plays there. Jaehyung as well as Caspi in the bot lane playing Sivir and Alistair respectively. And on the red side, we have Zotac 269, Krom on 13 goes Irelia, Heaven on his own Rek'Sai, Beyond on Ozarveki's Azir, Celebrity on Jaehyung's Jinx, Serg on Caspi's Leona. Yeah, now I've been yeah. informed that the pause is going to take a while, I think. So, hopefully we can get that back for you guys. As this is the inter-regional sort of uh, tournament league system, as it were. We're playing uh, on the top of your screen. You can see the m flags of Malaysia versus Vietnam. So, connection issues tend to be a problem here and there. And ping latency issues also tend to affect the players a lot. So, uh, give us a moment while we sort these things out. 
Oh, and they are sorted out. That was quick. So yeah, now one spawning, spawning on the blue side. <laughs> yeah. KLH, and yeah, now spawning out. Uh, as you know, I was speaking to J Storm, and he was saying how the players and the characters in the game, the models, spawn in order of top jungle, mid, AD carry support. And I did not know that they spawn in the order of first pick to fifth pick. Yeah, and that's how they order them. Exactly. So for all of you that want to bet with your friends, J Storm tried to bet me, but I was privy to that, so no worries. No. Those are the new gates from the side of your base. Yeah, taking you full use of it. Gonna get your jungle. Side gates are the best. Freedom side gates are the best. They did help KLH defend their base earlier on, but it looks like both kings will be just spreading out. KLH Moon's gonna spot out Heaven. Will Heaven spot out Moon? Uh, yep, he does. Yeah, there we go. Both teams spot each other out. Junglers for junglers, but beyond. You know he's backing up Heaven there. <laughs> yes. That Birdman on his back. 13 goes going for a bit of harass here on Chrome. Now, Lulu against Arela is actually pretty beneficial for Lulu, but hold on as we see 269 going for a very deep ward on the Grom there. If we can hover over it, thank you, Observer. Right there, it's gonna see if Moon starts out at his Grom camp, but Moon, sitting in the brush, has spotted that ward out, I believe. Very deep vision here, a lot of information going over to 269. Sirk as well as Celebrity forced um, Jayong out of that tri brush because. Caspil is somewhere in the mid lane protecting his own jungle, so they managed to put down that one to try brush. So getting that early vision down really helps out with the jungle routes. They know now that Moon is on that Gromp, Rexide is gonna start on his own Gromp, and maybe cross jungle action may happen because Rexide might want to go on this Vi. Yeah, and if you think about it, knowing where the enemy jungler starts gives your bot lane a lot of opportunity to play aggressive based on the timing. So now, we were talking in the pregame about how Celebrity and Cirque, they want to get the level 2, they want to get the kill in, especially picking up that Ignite on Cirque. If they know where Moon starts in the jungle, they could very well counter the ag aggression, excuse me. Oh, so Jayong's gonna push out that bot lane pretty hard, so that's the level 2 advantage we're coming in. They're gonna push out hard, they're gonna get the wave pushed into the turret, so... Because Heaven started on his Grom, Celebrity and Cirque had to help me out, so they came in late. There's the headbutt we say, um, power rise rather, coming in, so Caspio actually taking a little bit more damage than he wanted to take, so not really the best power rise coming in. Yeah, but you have to think that with the level 2 coming in soon, he's gonna get the triumphant roll, the heal is gonna keep him and Jeyung very healthy, so not, uh, nothing untoward, no potential damage is gonna stick there. Whereas, meanwhile, the ball lane of 269 pushing up very aggressively as well here. So, taking a lot of damage, trying to deward that ward. Doesn't get the auto Q auto off, so the ward will stay. Moving forward, they know they get the level 2 here. Oh, the Xenoblade lands so much damage going down. The Chompers as well, hit oh. by into the tower. Oh my goodness, sir, you are gonna Pop go rise. down. The heal is available, barrier is popped. Exhaust onto Celebrity. Oh, so much damage, Jayung, he has to cut this out. Celebrity, you are way overcommitted, my friend. Caspio as well as sir, they wanna duel this out. Now it's gonna be a support plus AD carry fight. The Pop rise hits too. The Boomerang Blade does not get Celebrity. Sir, has to run. Caspio as well as Jayung. Coming out better there, one summoner spell available, which is the flash for Caspio, both being used for the AD carries and support here for 269. Heavens is gonna walk out of the top lane, but a lot of aggression <laughs> going down. 13 goes, he has the flash, but my friend, you are caught way out now. Krom gets the first blood for his jungler here. Heaven with the early advantage. So Krom has asserted his dominance over 13 goes. He is now the better Irelia player. Will 13 goes fight back for this? Moon is back in his bot lane, will they go all the way? Yeah, the flash pop rise does land, the center flag goes onto Jail Moon that does not hit the Vault Breaker! My friend, what are you doing? Sirk is going so deep for this celebrity, Sir, one tick out. away, does get it, it's Jail Moon. Now Sirk has to run, 3v1 is this bot lane. Beyond's coming down. Beyond. Nope. He's not nope. exactly roaming nope. down. He's gonna get out. He, it's fine, it's fine. Right. KLH, uh, they're not in too much trouble here, but Tom... Uh, Heaven's going, going back in onto Lulu at his top lane though. Oh my goodness, heaven, so much aggression coming in this game. 13 goes round two, you are probably gonna go down here. No flash, no teleport available. The stun does not hit, it is a slow instead. And it's gonna be a kill for Krom now. One and one, two kills of this top lane, Zotac 269. Time and time again, pressuring 13 goes out. Heaven played that so well, seeing that 13 goes teleported back to that top lane without his flash pushing up so aggressively. Lulu was just asking to be ganked. Yeah, so you have to think, without any vision there, I think 13 Ghosts could have played that better, especially knowing the full potential of this matchup, playing Irela in the previous game. Alright, so, meanwhile, back in this mid lane, Azura Vecchi against Beyond. Here comes the Vault Breaker! So much damage onto wow. Beyond. Does not even survive with the heal. Doesn't even get time to pop the flash. So, with their Ignite down, 
it's going to lessen a bit of a kill potential at level 6, but the damage has been done. He is a bit down in CS, and Ozerveki has picked up that one kill, which will give him the early bilge water or brutalizer if he does want that. So far, both junglers really making a huge impact on the game. Down, meanwhile, on his bot lane. Jayong with that kill, still gonna get that pickaxe as opposed to Celebrity with his double Doran's blade, so he does have that damage advantage. Yep, junglers are gonna meet in a bit here. The Heba Pop Rise does land on Celebrity, the stun goes down to Caspi, tries to peel him off. Junglers meeting. The junglers just catch each other out, but it looks like Heaven is the one that's coming out better in this trade. Well, you can see there, the Flame Chomper is being used so well by Celebrity to deny Jayong the full up damage. Meanwhile, Heaven really taking Moon down on their own. Oh, here the comes Caspi. Blade onto Tune. The action is non stop. The Headbutt Pop Rise lands onto No Headbutt, especially coming in here. Caspi going solo. One more rocket will do it. No, one more rocket now will do it. Celebrity does not get it. He does. He oh. gets excited. Escapes barely. Jaehyun does not have anything now. He does get knocked up. Moon trying to provide some cover, but it does not land. My goodness, Ozarbeck. He joins in the action. Sir, you are going down, my friend. And all in all, it's going to be a 2 for 1 here for 269. Wow, junglers both sticking around, fighting, backing off, fighting once again. Celebrity going in for that kill, knowing he has that get excited to get out of there. Really, really well played on the South 269, but Ozoraveki coming in down for that roam. Beyond didn't really go for that roam, so Ozoraveki picking up that kill for himself. Gonna have that brutalizer for the lane. He's gonna start work on Beyond, but Beyond does have his blue buff, so. This mid lane, Ozoravaki is gonna get his death mark pretty soon, and yes. that's where we'll see some action. Now the CS advantage already being accrued by Chrome here because of his one kill, one assist lead. So going up 10 CS against a Lulu is no small feat, while Moon looping around the back is this Vi. He tries to get a gank off knowing that he's gonna hit level 6 soon, the Vault Breaker is available, but Beyond is wise to that. We know a lot of deep vision going on for KOH. Le level 6 here for Ozoravaki does have the death mark, was. Is he gonna go in? Nope, just gonna throw a couple of shurikens. Yeah, Beyond still has his flash, but he's going back in. The Empress Divide does knock him away. The Death Monk does get him the shield. Oh my goodness. A good outplay there by Zoraveki. Does juke back, forcing Beyond to jump onto him. But in the end, it's a kill for that Zed. And now he is huge. 3 0 and 0. Oh, Zoraveki playing those shadows pretty well. Dodging out. Did Heaven just fail go, go through that wall? I think he just did. Yeah, no, he juke back because. Of, oh, yeah, actually, uh. he did go through that wall. So that's a bit weird there. Perhaps a bit of a visual bug. As a bit of damage goes down on the bot, si bot side, excuse me, for uh, 269. They are slightly behind in CS as well as uh, summoner spells, so they have to be very careful here. Right, so Sirk has his side stone. Caspiel opting for the boost of speed, so that cow is going to be having a bigger impact in his lane. But Sir, nope, they're just going to push out and get out of there. Yeah, a bit of harass goes down the top lane, but Freedom, tell me now that, you know, with all this aggression as, uh, hold on, Moon comes in for a game, he gets the polymorph down onto Chrom. Chrom will walk away, so nothing on toward toward that. But as I was saying, you know, with all this aggression going down from both teams here, who's going to come out better and come out ahead? Because both teams are very skirmish heavy with the level 6 power spike. Who's going to be the better one? Right, so both teams are pretty even right now. So, Irelia has that late game impact. If you compare champions... Let's just compare champions. Lulu against Irelia. Lulu has a more team-based synergy. She has the wild growth to keep okay. your team alive. Yeah. Irelia, she wants to go into the back line. Yep. She doesn't go in and wreck havoc. On, but on a team comp against KLH, there is no back line except for Jayong. So I, I don't think you're going to catch up to Jayong where he's running away from you at like 10,000 miles per hour. So he'll probably be staying around his teammates. going to block out the damage coming from Moon and Ozoraveki. Moon and Heaven... Vi wants to go in. That's all she does. She wants to go in. Heaven has the option to go in or to protect the teammates. Azir, once again, has the ability to do a defensive move, has the ability to go offensive. Azorvaki has only the possibility to go offensive. So, KLH, all in all, are a very offensive team. Come, they want to go in for the fight. KL, um, 269 have that disengage and an engage potential, so if the game drags out too long, 269 is going to read KL like a book. The moment they see them coming towards them, they know they're going to fight, and they can just trick around that and go for their own strategies. Yeah, definitely having the tools to do with this hard engage coming in from KLH here. Now, I've been informed that it is a 3 minute pause, uh, 269 I believe, the seat uh, due to a bit of an internet issue, but rightly put, you, you did say there, uh, Freedom. 
269 have a bit more of a flexible composition to push and pull this side of KOH. We saw in the previous game, the pushing and pulling really did was what won them the game, especially with Beyond Zeref. Now with Dezir, functioning in a similar vein, you know, you're going to be hit, sitting in the back line, throwing those soldiers out, peeling for your team. I really have to give the decisive edge to 269 here after all these skirmishes and engages. But something very similar to game one is happening once again. Ozora Veki is 3 0 on his Z. Will he be able to carry his team this game round? Yeah, we really have to see there. He is posing a lot of threat to Beyond Azir here, throwing out so much damage with those uh, Shadow Shurikens. I think Beyond here is going to have to play a bit more far back and be less aggressive in this similar vein. Oh, as I say, less aggressive. He tries to go for the big play, does not get it. Heaven jukes onto him. Azura Vecchi tries to go for Death Mark to get a return kill, but oh no, it is Heaven that picks up the kill. Now Moon charging up his Vault Breaker on the back line, does not want to go in. That is a smart decision, decision there, my friend. So Heaven now spots him out. Wants to go in, probably does get a knock up Moon. You have to flash away, my friend. Now Heaven going in for so much damage with the red buff, ticks him down. That's it's two kills for the jungler there. 4 0 and 2 is this Rek'Sai. He's going to be such a beast in the mid game. Just as we were saying, how Azir could go offensive or defensive. If you think he's going to go defensive, nope, he's just going to turn right around. And that's the power of 269 com. They can just flip the switch and go aggressive. If they feel uh, uncomfortable, they just back out. And Heaven really is making Moon suffer in this jungle. So, very well played on the side of 269. Yeah. Moon, uh, Heaven is 4 0. Yeah, now speaking of aggressive here, sitting on the sidelines is this Rex side. They spot out all the head flash pulverizers. Zerg wants to peel them off. The chompers here haven't caught out on enemy lines. Uses the talent to disengage. Very well played there. Does not overcommit is this Vietnamese side. Now in the mid lane, so much time being freed up for Azir here. He's just going to be pushing down, using those sand soldiers to maximum effect. Right, so while Jayong just died the bot lane. Yeah, we talk about pushing and pulling the solar flare. Now the flash comes in. Does not get it now. Heaven, a lot of damage going down onto 13 Ghosts, who has to in return flash away from all that damage. So, pushing and pulling 2 6 Knight really coming out here. You have 2 for 0 there for the bot lane duels. And they burn the teleport from 13 Ghosts, so that frees up Krom to push up that top lane. He's just gonna send away from the turret. Also, far back, he's gonna get poked down by the Sand Soldiers a bit. So, 2 6 Knight really, really having the advantage, having. Knowing that KLH has to go aggressive, Beyond's gonna go aggressive as well. Now Heaven in the back lines gets two sand soldiers onto Azor Vecchi. He uses the death mark once again, the Empress Divide knocks him away. Not enough damage to pick up Moon. Uh, pick up Beyond excuse Vecchi, excuse me. Now Moon always once again in the back line, charging on Vault Breakers, can't always go in. Heaven is really playing this Rexai well. Always one step ahead of this Vi. Sir is gonna put on that date board. Caspio's not gonna be able to do anything about this. So 269 have that advantage. And they are pushing for their ward line. So that is going to one on one Jayong right now. Yeah, Jayong getting dueled out here, going very low. One more rocket will do it. There you go, celebrity. You pick up the right full 1v1 on Jinx, who is Jayong's admittedly favorite champion apart from Vayne. So Irelia has defeated Lulu. Jinx has defeated Jayong. Um, Silver. I would pretty much say <laughs> Leona has defeated Alistair as well. I so want to watch Leona solo kill Alistair. <laughs> it has to be a support fight for you. Oh, we the top later. We won again. 13 goals getting camped out relentlessly. If you look carefully on your minimap, you'll see Heaven's 10 right there in the brush, guys. Heaven is now 5 0. He is doing work. The 3 0 Osora Vecchi we saw is now 3 2. Now, sir, sir. He lands the skill of Daybreak onto Casper. He probably breakable will, so he will be able to tank a lot more damage than 269 expects. Sir, mismanaged it dive badly. 269 have to back off. Moon coming in for the backup. They don't see him. Krom is teleporting in as well. 13 goes here. Sitting in the base. Not really sure why we pan over to that, but Krom providing a lot of support here for Celebrity. The Vault Breaker as well as the Void Rush being used here. The Zep does not land, so no re-engage coming for 269, but they do want to go in. Jayung pops the spell shield. Does not get knocked up. Meanwhile, Heaven gets knocked into tower range. The rest of the team have to abandon him here. Jayung very low. Super Mega Death Rocket was used to not execute him. And also Becky, meanwhile the sideline is gonna deal out some damage on the Beyond. It's not gonna let him reinforce his bot lane. Looks like the fight will continue. Moon's gonna go up for it. Oh, there we go. A sudden battery onto Krom. Gets the stun flash. Here comes the away. cow. Now the cow. He's stutter stepping a bit, taunting, I believe. I can't really hear that now. The rest of the team following up. So does land the solo frag oh. immediately pops that silver Jayun goes down. Caspio. Meanwhile, second one to go down. Third one could be 13 goes here, Krom. Using the flame stoppers to deny his exit, very well played here by 269. Cirque picking up that kill on Jayong would just mean that Cirque is now the best 
at Leona, Caspio, you have been dethroned. So, yeah. 269, <laughs> even though that fight started out pretty rocky, we finally saw Rek'Sai using his ultimate to go into a fight. The, for the first time, admittedly. And, and she dies on the turret. You could see the despair in Jae Wing's face as the solar flare came down onto him and she's like, well, I'm dead, you know. I can't do anything here, guys. Good so luck. even with the loss of heaven, they managed to pick up that fight. KLH going a little bit too aggressive. They wanted to go in for more, but because they had that, they thought Osorabeki had already gone beyond very low. They felt safe enough to go in for the fight, but beyond being the man he is, going in with just half health. Who cares about that Z on the enemy team? I'm just gonna go in and support my teammates. And what do, what happens? We win the fight. Yeah, definitely being a man here. You can see, especially in the mid lane, using those shifting sands so aggressively, catching on Zarabeki off guard, together with the right side to get those ganks in. Now 269 with this 5,000 gold advantage, and it kills up. Goes in very deep for Vision Cirque. Now this is what I like to see from a team that is a hit. Using your power spikes and your item advantages to get deep vision to spot out the enemy team and give your own team a lot more information. Right, so 269 have hit their item spikes. Oh, the so rise. Does the Vault Breaker connect though? Nope. Sanso just coming for backup. It's 4v2 effectively there. <laughs> so 269 asserting their dominance on that brush. It's my brush now. You guys can't pink that. Heaven's back in his tent in top lane, but there is a ward in his tent. Yeah, there is a ward on the tent. Doesn't spot it out. The pings will go down for Heaven. He wants to go in for the side gang. He does try it. Doesn't land the knockup. So Chrome had to pop his Transcendent Blades there to clear out the way for that dive. But all in all, a bit of a wasted effort for Heaven. Now oh. the flash coming doesn't land the pulverize. Caspio, Caspio, not as comfortable on this uh, Alistair as you could see on the Leona. Meanwhile, 269 is going to pick up two turrets at the same time. Top lane goes down to the right side area. They're going to go in on Lulu. Yeah, a lot of damage going down. The Hitan style dealing so much true damage to 13 goes. He has to pop the Whimsy just to escape now. Beyond being jumped on with the Death Mark. Empress Divide, why are we jumping over, guys? The Death Mark will pop as well. Reki does get the kill now, sir. Wants some revenge. Moon, however, charges up the Vault Breaker. Escapes oh. the Flash Knockup comes in for Heaven. Very well played. The Wild Grove uses to peel him off Heaven. Now in a lot of trouble but on the side. Chrome, he has the Blade Search available. He wants 13 goals. He's walking. He's a snowman. Does not get it for a while. So the snowman. Celebrity is coming on the side. Celebrity, especially on the side. Use the pulverize on a hit by using this flash. KLH are safe from this. June did pop his on the hunt. Not exactly sure why Celebrity takes a lot of damage here. Sir can't help him. He has no mana. They have to escape here. Celebrity tries to get the counter kill. Doesn't get it. My goodness. Jae Young getting the return kill. Jae Young has shut down Celebrity. Krom is gonna go down. Oh. Zorabeki is joined low. He does get the kill in return. So Krom falls one for one. Trades for Zorabeki. All now the extended two for one for KOH here. They have the man advantage without any mana. Rex is coming back in. Uh, the void, <laughs> void rush being used on the sides here. Trying to get the kill on 213 goes here. I don't think Heaven should go in for this. Beyond's back. They can push for this turret if they want to. 269 have the man advantage as well as the health advantage. Jae Young is forced to go back. I don't think Caspio can defend this turret on his own. But 269 don't think they're gonna push oh. for this. Nope. Doesn't get it. The last 0.5 second of the recall is uncancelable, I believe. Yep. So he knew he was safe. Don't worry. So Moon. Caspio actually defended the turret very well. Yeah. Being that single cow just deterred three members of 269 I away. I feel he didn't really defend it more or less. Uh, it was more of 269 deciding we don't want to commit for this turret because we know uh, even with it down, we won't have much of an impact doing other things like going deep for vision or setting up picture in this brush. So 269 focusing or refocusing their uh, objective somewhere else. So 269, once again, not going to push out this mid lane. Yeah, there you go. A lot of mm. deep vision here being claimed for 269. Walking three members, four members deep into the jungle of KLH. The hunters have no clue that they're being caught out here. Beyond pops the ward over the ledge here. So it's not gonna find anyone in this jungle. Oh, oh the Zenith does. Blade does catch Moon as well as the Solar Friends knockout being changed so much. So Bloodthirsty support picks up the kill with that auto attack and eclipse. So KLH here, vision not being utilized well. How did 269 see Moon in that brush? There was a ward over there, I believe, that uh, Moon cleared oh. out that he recalled in oh the right. same brush. So 269 knowing uh. that, you know, there's a 50% chance he's gonna be here. Oh, oh the death mark. He popped up the crumb here in the wild group as well. Pop goes there. But there goes the inner turret. Yeah, they're trading kills for turrets here. Not very good for KLH. 269 will get this tier to mid inhibit uh, mid turret, excuse me. The smite goes on to Caspio Jail. Caught out of position. The Base gates. gate. 
No, oh. doesn't do anything. Double Caspio's going back in. Caspio goes in for the pulverize. Doesn't get it. The base gates will save him for a bit. Spoke too soon. Super Mega Death Rocket goes onto him. 13 goes. goes. Barely lives the whimsy. Oh no. my goodness. The snipe coming from heaven. Rek'Sai doing so much work. 269, 20 to 11. 8,000 gold ahead all of a sudden with so much objectives. Taken 4 turrets to 0 here. KOH really lacking in their play. 269 really making use of the base gates. Giving KLH the false sense of false sense of security and just eliminating them right outside of their base. That is cruel. Yeah, base gates don't really work if you die before you get inside. So uh KLH might wanna take note of that. So let's take a look at the items right now. Chrome has finished his Trinity Force as well as Heaven. So that's two Trinity Forces on the side of 269. Morello Nomicon on the s on the side of Beyond. Infinity Edge on Celebrity and Cirque has his face of the mountain as well as the Giant's Belt. Rek'Sai is going to go in for farm. There we go. Using the yeah. Void Rush for its intended purpose to get around the jungle and farm. Just kidding. Come here on for the flank. Yep. Wants to get the knockup onto Azura Veki. Doesn't get it. He could turn this. He has the Death Mark. Decides not to play safe considering that Cirque is sitting along the edge here. Now he spots out Caspio as well as Jeyoung. They do clear out the ward but with Dragon up. And division in favor of KLH. They know that it is up, and 269 is attempting this. We could see a very explosive fight carry out in uh, a matter of seconds here. Right, so interesting to, interesting to note right before this fight, Heaven has a quick silver sash. So he knows that he's not going in. So he's not going on Moon. Catches Moon with the Xenoblade. The Solar Flare whips in a bit. The Vault Breaker being used does not get over the ledge beyond. Picks him up with those Sand Soldiers. Uh, he misestimated the range there, I believe. But very well by 269 to pull out the dragon as in the bot side oh, of the map. Jae-Yung Jae Jae gets caught out immediately by Beyond. Beyond picks him up. I believe, oh no, excuse me, Celebrity picks him up. The Super Mega Death Rocket does not land, but Sir oh, here. The very, very bloodthirsty double kill here for Celebrity. This guy is snowballing out of control, guys. Heaven, heaven. The Death Mark being popped on him does not get him with the second. Oh, the Shadow Quicksilver Sash picks him up. Now the Zen Blade goes back onto 13, goes so much damage. Being evaporated immediately is this Lulu. No Winter Wonderland for you. 269 here. 10,000 gold lead again. Picking up these spikes in gold. Heaven's quick first sash managed to save his life. So that was the point I was going to talk about before that fight. That QSS. Heaven is the one going into the front lines. And what's on the front of KLH? A lot of lockdown. And Azura Veki's death mark. Yeah, but you look at the composition from 269. You can't jump anyone else. So everybody's always going to be in the back lines. If you jump beyond, he's going to Empress divide you away. And you know, that's the end of that. You only have Heaven who is semi-squishy and Sir who isn't at all. So you've got to make a very tough choice here Rek's for Kelly. back. He's going to go around. Jeon's going to get caught. Jeon get caught out by the Xenoblade immediately now. In the front line, Moon tries to peel for his team. The assault battery goes down, but the Empress Divide splits him up from the rest of his team. They want to re-engage onto this. The knock-up flash coming in from 13 goes. The resets go onto Celebrity. That's a double kill for him. He wants the triple. He's going one, two. Doesn't get the third shot. The fourth shot onto Jim. Is the crit going to land? He does get the triple kill. Celebrity showing Jim how it's done. And they get the inhibitor turret and possibly the inhibitor as well. 269. Rek'Sai finally making a point why that ultimate is so scary if you don't have your flanks watered you rather just get out of there because Rek'Sai is going to come in and he's going to knock your AD carry up and you have nothing to say about that yeah and talking about Rek'Sai Heaven has been so on point with those flash arm barrels this game it's unreal he's been ca catching so many priority targets of KOH out of position allowing Sirk with the solar flare and Zenith Blade to chain that up into the you know Chrom's equilibrium strike into the Zap coming in from Celebrity he's been doing so much work definitely the MVP for this game so, KLH have to regroup. 6, 3 and 1 is that Ozora Veki. We said that this game was on his shoulders. He is, he does have a Last Whisper as well as that um, Brutalizer. He has a lot of armor pen. Doesn't have a lot of damage. I mean, well, uh, Z maybe. skills priority, prior, uh, well, mostly with, excuse me, with uh, armor penetration. So now, no. 269 gonna try for a very sneaky Baron here. Celebrity is doing this. They it's see Jay Young in the bot lane. Yeah, yeah. they saw Jay yeah. in the bot lane. So they're going to attempt this now. Four members onto this Baron. 269 are sure to get it, barring some huge mishap. But just as I say that, uh, Red Team has Baron. slain Baron Nasher. So with this short hand of the Baron buff that they have. They're going on the moon. Yeah, they're jumping on the moon. Empress Divide splits him up for the rest of his team. Caspi on the sideline gets chunked down so hard. 13 goes is the focus now. Uses the wild growth for himself. Doesn't save him. He get excited for Jinx. 
gets out the second kill for Beyond. One, two, Celebrity. One for Beyond. Four members, or uh, excuse me, three members left alive for KOH. 269 is going to push down this mid lane and they're going to get it. Heaven's going to go through the side yeah, gates, Jay but there. you can't go back out, Heaven. Heaven doesn't need to get out. He just knows that, hey, this inhibitor turret's open. We can just take it now. The inhibitor turret goes down. The inhibitor is sure to follow as well. Five members strong. Is this Vietnamese squad from 269. They're sitting in the base of KOH a bit precariously, I think. They're going for their top lane yeah, turret. They have to disengage here. They should just go for the safe play. You know, nope, recall, off, yeah. buy items, and go for their top lane turret. Right, so now KOH have two, base, two waves of super minions coming in from the mid and the bot lane. They are sending three men, to down, three men down to deal with that. So KLH now playing on the back foot, having their base exposed. 269 can just leisurely stroll down this top lane. Pick up that third inhibitor. Rex size coming in. He's gonna join the team in this top lane. And it's time to clean out the base of KLH. Yeah, definitely well said there. Cleaning out the base is what 269 is gonna be looking to do now. With 33, 34 minutes on the timer, definitely half the time compared to the previous game and with more turrets as well. So 269, very decisive this game, showing KLH how to play a composition that was made to skirmish. Cash going back in. The transcendent place has been popped. The solar flare straight onto 13 goes, gets locked down. Wild Grove to peel them off. But so much damage being chunked onto this Lulu. He will not survive. Oh, will he? He does get away. The Super oh, Mega Death Rocket Jayong. blocked by Jaehyung. 13 goes, oh my goodness. I mean, uh, Chrome rather, excuse me. A solid battery onto him. Overextended a bit there, but Meanwhile, Heaven just going ham on this Vi here. No respect at all for the turrets. 269 here with the turret inhibitor going down. This should be game. Super minions are throwing into the base. Caspel going back in for the stand, but Shuck <laughs> just gonna go down. <laughs> Osara Vecchi does get the kill in return. Our celebrity gets one, gets two. Does he get three? He wants Caspel. He does not get him though. So, on and on, it's gonna be those double kills for celebrity here. With minions. the inhibitor. Yep, minions are, are coming in. It's going to be a very, very decisive and quick game here. Half the time it took them just raiding the Nexus as well as the base and fountain of KLH here. 269 not showing any respect. They're going to get game 2 and the 3 points. They're creating them a very safe second position pole placing and making it out of group stages very well. GG to 269. So 269 wins the honor match. KLH going to drop this series 0 and 2. So very well played on the side of Zotac 269. They will be advancing to the next stage of GPL. As for which seed they will be, let's just guarantee that they will be a second seed. Unless IGL loses 2-0, 